Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon native tank and as much as I don't like having air stones in tanks, this tank is one that I make an exception for. The fish that are in here all come from shallow fast moving waters that are highly oxygenated and while I don't really think I need an air stone in this tank, I feel like it's better safe than sorry. So I do keep an air stone in this tank and in order to maximize gas exchange I actually deliberately position the air stone underneath of the power head over here so that just like that the occasional bubble gets caught in the power head and you see a sort of little disruption of the bubbles and a spreading of these little micro bubbles into the tank and I get a lot of really good gas exchange and aeration that way but if you'll notice that bubbler airstone looks a little lackluster now that's just your standard they're usually blue they're about an inch long and maybe a half inch diameter a little round cylinder of stone and they usually let out quite a lot of little tiny bubbles and now we're only getting a few big bloops coming out of it at a time part of that has to do with the fact that I've got the airstone stuck underneath of a rock uh, deliberately to hide it partially and also to keep it kind of hidden and out of sight so you will see sort of a disruption in all the little tiny bubbles but I should be getting a lot more vigorous bubbling coming out of there so I think what's happening is the air stone is just getting clogged it just over time I don't know if it's calcification I don't know if the uh, in internal you know aspects of the stone start breaking down and decaying over time I have no idea but I have found that over time they just tend to get clogged I've seen people talk about ways you can clean them soaking them in vinegar and so on and so forth frankly they last long enough and they're so inexpensive I say throw them away when they get clogged up and just buy a new one so what I did I'm actually trying a different kind I bought a four pack of these little flat discs and we'll have a closer look at one of them I know this isn't the best light in the world to look at them under the fish tank light, but you can see the where the airline goes in, and then it's just a flat disc of porous stone. There's no bottom uh, or anything. I thought maybe it was going to sit flat, and it would be just sort of like a, a plate on the bottom or something, but it's not. So it should be interesting to see how vigorously this bubbles once we get it hooked in there. And I'm hoping that maybe if it bubbles the way the little advertising picture shows it, which again I take with a grain of salt, I understand how advertising works, but it's sort of advertised as kind of already you know launching micro bubbles into the tank it almost looks like a cloud of gray bubbles rising rather than a bunch of little tiny vigorous bubbles rising it almost looks like they're micro bubbles to begin with i doubt we're going to see that kind of diffusion but it should be interesting so you guys sit tight for half a minute let me get this put in there and then we'll have a look at what your uh before all right everybody there's your after so that is quite a lot of bubbles. I don't really think I need the power head to be grabbing so many and throwing them out into the water column like that. But that's just kind of how it's working. I've got that air stone tucked tight up into the corner and it's still just dumping out so much air that it's getting caught up in the impeller there. The other stone, even when it was fully functioning, I had to sort of position it and move it around. I had it... Um, tied to that rock that was in the corner just to hold it down it was so lightweight the air in the line and the air in the stone would actually tend to lift it up and move it around and the fish would bump into it so this one is just dumping the bubbles into the tank and I can't really avoid them getting caught in the power head I'd really kind of like to though I think we're dumping enough air into the tank that just that column of bubbles will be enough the other one I had the twisty tie hooked to the stone. This stone is actually a pretty big hefty stone and sat on the bottom just fine all by itself. And I only kind of have that rock propped in front of it um, sort of for you know visual appearances. You don't see that big unnatural looking stone in the bottom. There's not a lot I can do about the airline or the power head, but we can you know minimize it by hiding that um, air stone underneath of a real stone. So I don't know what I'm going to do, we'll, we'll get to something, we'll figure something out, but while I'm standing here and thinking about it, I do want to have a little bit of a conversation about 
gas exchange and bubbles dissolving into the water. Um, I've done videos in the past and I've removed them about how a lot of people seem to believe, and I used to be one of them, that the air bubbles rising to the surface was not the bubbles in the water so much that were giving you your gas exchange, but rather it was the bubbles were carrying water from down deep in the tank and rising it up to the surface and the surface area is where all of the magic happens you know all that gas exchange happens so while you did get some gas exchange by the bubbles themselves you really got your serious gas exchange going on at the surface and then the bubbles only sort of acted as a means to get that water to the surface so I used to believe that I no longer do if that were true then you could simply put a power head down low in the tank and angle it upward and you would achieve a much much more efficient movement of water from lower down in the tank up to the surface and moving it around on the surface and yet uh, I spoke with uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op he shot a video about oxygen dissolving into the water and gas exchange in the water and uh, he was kind enough to take the time to answer a few of my questions and he has done some actual testing with equipment on oxygen levels in the water and found that hands down there's just no comparison to having bubbles in the water even when and he deliberately did take a power head and, and angle it upwards and it took water from deep in the tank and moved it to the top and even there was even surface agitation where it rippled at the top and it couldn't touch the efficiency of an air stone so it really is the bubbles that are in the water that are having an impact I started giving it some thought after that conversation with him and I felt kinda silly after giving it a few moments thought I don't see how anybody wouldn't think it's the bubbles being in the water that's making an impact you've got several things going on first of all if you think about the surface area of a sphere which is what a bubble is effectively in the water it's a lot more than you might think and even though one bubble is only in the water for a few moments and then it's gone it's a continuous stream of them so you kinda have to think about them as one solid thing if you were to put pause right now and look at all those bubbles that would be the amount of surface area in the tank and that includes all these tiny 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 little micro bubbles so I actually did have a viewer one time, believe it or not, pause one of my videos and count the number of bubbles and then he did some math and calculation and he came out to be in one of my 55's that it added almost half again the surface area of the tank just under the water. So that was surprising but I thought more about it and I thought even that's not right you've got other things going on here there's more dynamics at work than simply the surface area inside the bubble it's a bubble that's being held in that position because it's underwater therefore it's under pressure so think about a balloon when you blow that up with air if you've got a balloon that's say the size of a grapefruit the volume of air that's inside that rubber membrane is far greater than the the volume of space that that balloon is taking up and that's because the the rubber membrane the balloon itself is compressing the air inside that balloon these bubbles are effectively the same thing it might not be to that extreme but the water pressure is actually compressing the air in these bubbles so these bubbles actually contain more air than natural atmospheric pressure would allow for. Effectively what you've got is a hyperbaric or a um, an environment that's hyperbaric, an environment that's higher pressure than atmospheric pressure. So you've got the air sort of being squeezed into the water and that causes for much much more efficient gas exchange and dissolution into the water because it's under pressure in addition to being under pressure as I said you've got the increased volume so it's being pressurized into the water it's a huge amount of surface area in its own right but the surface area actually contains far more atmospheric gas than the surface would if it was actually at atmospheric levels so you've got a lot of dynamics going on when you've got these bubbles underwater 
And it absolutely, the, the lion's share of the gas exchange happens due to the bubbles being in the water. It's not the surface agitation that really makes the huge impact. Otherwise, simply putting a, a small power head down low in the tank, angled straight upwards, moving the water from the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank, would be a much, much more efficient way of accomplishing that if that's all that was going on. But it's really not, and again, just giving it a few moments thought, uh, makes it pretty clear that there's a lot more going on than simply water being moved around by the bubbles and it is indeed uh, you know gas exchange happening within those bubbles and on a final thought I'll say you probably won't be able to do it in one of these videos but if you've got a tank and you've got little tiny micro bubbles like these or if you ever come across the opportunity to look at one of these really closely pick a tiny little bubble one time and I'm talking about the tiniest little bubble you can see that's so small that it's not even really rising to the surface you'll just see it sort of moving around in the water column like it's being swirled around in the current and you can watch that bubble vanish before your very eyes where do you think it's vanishing to it's dissolving into the water right before your very eyes so you're watching you're literally watching visible amounts of atmospheric gas being dissolved into the water so if that's not, you know, proof positive that that's what's going on, I don't know what is. So again, I feel kind of silly ever believing that that's not what was going on. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, thinking about it to really kind of realize that that's obviously what's going on. So anyway, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope that was helpful to somebody. Make sure you subscribe. That way you won't miss anything. You never know what you're going to get with me. Don't forget this one here is my 125-gallon native tank. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you real soon on the next one.